Anthony Lynn. It's been 2013? Six years? Five years? Yeah. It was like January, it February. Was 13, of... yeah, it was. Yeah. And we're reunited. Very different yeah. city. You've gone soft on me. Different, I've gone soft on you? Well, you know, we're in California. You're in the sunshine. It's, hey, let me tell you. It's not New York. It's shorts and flip flops every day. But you're not in shorts or flip flops. You got dressed up for me. No, not really. I'm going to dinner after this, so. Oh, well, I wasn't invited <laughs> to dinner, so we're just going to transition into the, uh, into the next party. Here. So, okay. But look, I owe you a celebration. Let's do it's it. Been, it's been two years since uh, you became head coach, but I wasn't there two years ago. No. So, well, really, a belated well, really, champagne toast to you. Uh, but you had a lot to do with it. I mean, you, you helped me with this campaign of becoming a head coach. Yeah, huh? you know, you know, I who would have thought that was, you came up to me and you were like, hey, uh, can you help me with something? And I was like, yeah, sure. And yeah. this was when I was a reporter for the Jets. I, I was like, <laughs> I was like, you don't have anything to do. <laughs> and I'm like, what, what, what's going on? And I thought it was going to be like something difficult. I don't know. Right, right, but right. you're like, I need help building my resume. Yeah, you typed all my stuff together, have me build yes. a resume. Let me tell you, I still use that stuff. I still use See? this stuff. So I'm also You did a heck of a job. It, you did I, a heck of a job. I, I think that I basically made you head coach. Uh, yeah, you know. In a way. In a way, yeah. Yeah. I couldn't you know, have done it I couldn't have done it without you. You can send me my ten percent later, I won't take it now. What is this? It's a really okay. nice champagne. I know that you like nice things. And I it's do nice. too. Well, when you were so when you were with the Jets, when I was when we were with the Jets together, yeah. you were assistant head coach right. for Rex Ryan. Um, that's my man. That's your guy. Rex was fired, and then yeah. you left with him to go to the Bills. Right. And then he was fired again. So I gotta ask, like, what are you? What'd you do to the man? <laughs> this is you. Are you a coach killer? I'm not a coach killer. <laughs> well, I never thought about it that way, Liz. You, you see? Okay. But, Poor uh, Rex Ryan never saw know, it coming. <laughs> <laughs> Rex and I, we had some great years together. He's a heck of a coach, and uh, he, he taught me a lot. You know, it, it, he was a big part of me becoming a head coach. Made me the assistant head coach, and he treated me that way. You know, I told him uh, a lot of people get that title just for money, uh, but Rex kind of gave me the responsibilities of that title. And I think that made a big difference in my career right now. He's a good guy. I know that. Um... We used to have these meetings with the Jets when, when they would win games and he would come and he would speak and he would give this like, you know, this yeah. little speech yeah. and it would pump everybody up. And every time no I questions. saw him in the halls, every time, ma'am, yes. like he was just very yes. approachable, and that's really the, nice guy. And, and that's Rex, that's just the way he is and people loved him. And uh, he treated everybody, you know, like um, th there was no such thing as a small job, you know. Everybody, everybody had a role with Rex and he, and he just appreciate everybody. What's one thing that you guys are, or have something similar, uh, one thing that you guys are both uh, similar in, as far as like, what did you adapt from him coaching style wise? You know, uh, I, li I like the way he handled the players. I thought Rex got the most out of players and uh, he has his whole career. So uh, yeah. uh, I watched closely and you know, when I got my opportunity, you know, I do a lot of the things that Rex, that Rex did because I thought it worked. Are you a player's coach? I'm a, no, I, I hate it when people say, what's, what's a player's coach? Okay. I mean, people he, always said Rex Ryan was a player's coach. Hell, I want to be a winner. I, I want to be known as a winning coach, uh, player's coach, you know? Well, I mean, I'd say you're doing but, a pretty uh, damn good job. It's been, you guys were 5-11 and 11 when yeah, you took over. But until you win that Lombardi trophy, uh -huh. none of that matters. It's true. Okay? It's we do, true, we do, we do this for one reason, and that's to be the last team standing at the end. So you're not going to give yourself even a little bit of credit for taking you guys to the playoffs for the first time in five years. That doesn't matter. Just, does, just the it, ultimate it, it, win. That doesn't matter. Until we get the Lombardi Trophy, I will not be satisfied. Not even a little bit proud. Like, man, no. we did this. <laughs> no, no. Give yourself a little, a little yeah. of that happiness juice. You can. You can do that. I mean, I would say yeah, I'll do, do it for you. Like, yeah. I think that's that's really yeah. damn impressive. But. And now, like, there's, they're actually, they're saying you're, like, one of the top ten coaches in the NFL, and that happened in two years. But, you know, uh, I think the pursuit of doing that is, is probably more important. And, and the pursuit of doing it with the right people and doing it the right way, and that's what I enjoy the most. That's what gets me out of bed and, and go to work every day and do what I do and, and to be passionate about it. There's the men that I work with. But you know what's going to happen is you're going to win one, and then you're going to be like, I'm not satisfied with one. I want two. Well, what's happened and before? And you're going to get two, and then you're going to get to three. 
Well, let's, let's just get the one first. Okay? <laughs> I'm getting a lot Let's just of get the one first. But this, so this past postseason was, I mean, you guys hadn't been to the postseason in five years. Yeah. Was there like the lack of an experience that a lot of the players, you know, were newbies, especially going up against the Patriots, who obviously are, you know, it's they're they're used to that. Were people nervous? Or did you feel like that that nervous energy beforehand? I don't I don't think we were nervous at all. I I think we started out a little flat, you know, the first half and the second half, the first half, you know, got out of hand. The second half, we really won 21 to six, but no one knows that we played that much better in the second half because we were so far behind the first half. Yeah. I just think for whatever reason, we started out a little flat. I could have made some different adjustments. And I learned from it, and uh, you know, we'll see what happens this year. Just, I put it behind me and moving on. What does it feel like, though, to be, like, to be known as the man like took the team and changed it that quickly in two seasons, and now like there's so much hype and buildup of, like, oh, man, the Chargers are going to be like the team to watch, and they had seven Pro Bowlers last year. I heard, year. I it's heard. It's all talk, it's all I talk. Heard. Yeah. Is it in one ear and out yeah. the other, are you listening? You know, uh, I like those expectations, and uh, I, I like the people talking about it. I, I want it to be that way. That means that you're doing something right. And so uh, the, the, the challenge is learning to live with those expectations and how you handle when you respond to that. Uh, some people cave under pressure. Uh, I don't think this group will. You know, uh, we have great leaders in our coaching staff, a lot of character in our locker room. And so and I've told guys there's going to be more media around. And uh, the expectations are higher, and, and you, I wouldn't want it any other way, to be honest with you. And I want us to get used to it, because I want it to be this way for a long time. And you guys will get your own home next year. Yeah. 2020, it's coming. Yeah, yeah. Have you seen it? I haven't. No, it's, well, you just drive by, it's unbelievable. And then you had the, like, the horrific car accident. Oh, my goodness. That, I mean, I still can't believe you're... You're don't walking down the street. Don't remind me of that. Mom. Jesus, like yeah. you're, you're walking out of a restaurant, you're crossing the street. Yeah. How yeah. do you put something like that just behind you? You know what? Uh, it's hard to put behind you completely because it happened. But, it, you know, I wake up every day and I just don't take things for granted like I used to. And uh, I think sometimes in life you can get to a point where you're starting to feel a little invincible. And you're walking across the street and you get hit by a car. You're like, how the hell did that happen? You know, but... uh. It did. He was going like 50, 60 miles an hour. He's going 55 right. to 60 miles an hour, yeah. Trust me, I shouldn't be here today, but I know I'm here for a reason. So uh, uh, it's, it's my job to live out that purpose and, you know, and not take anything for granted, like I said, and, and live the best life I can. I couldn't, okay, I couldn't believe this. Because I would imagine that it would be really difficult to let go of something like that, especially of the person that did that to you. And I read that the prosecutor actually called you and said, what do you think we should do as far as the sentencing for the guy that, that hit you? And right. your response was, does he have a family and has, does he have any prior convictions? And he did have a family and he didn't, so you wanted the minimum sentence for him. Yeah, I mean, the guy never had a prior. He had a seven-year-old, a nine-year-old daughter. He had a wife. And so uh, uh, it was no reason for him to spend seven years in prison, in my opinion. Uh, I thought that was enough. Uh, I had some family members, uh, some coaches, Coach Parcells wanted to kill him. Well, I mean, I think that, I feel like <laughs> you know? most people would. How, like, you know? this guy but, was this close from taking your life and your, your no ability doubt. to forgive something that, but, I gotta be honest, I don't know if I could forgive that. It, I don't think it was intentional, you know? I just oh, no, think it was, a, it was a bad situation. Uh, you know, he, he shouldn't have done what he did. I think a year in probation was plenty, but uh, I just hope that when he got out that he took care of his family. And it's his wife and his two daughters. You know you're going straight to heaven for that one. Because <laughs> if that's me, I'd be I like, wish what it was... is the max? <laughs> let, let that fucker learn his lesson. <laughs> Some people are, you know, a little more generous of spirit than others. Uh, I don't know. And, it's, just, it's just the way I felt at the time, you know. You, maybe on a different day, I'd have felt differently, you know, so. Maybe maybe uh, this, that, that gesture of complete and total uh, kindness and open-heartedness got you to where you are in a way. The universe repaid you for, for what you did. Who knows, maybe so, I don't know. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think of it that way. That's, I don't know. In an ideal world, I, I would love to believe that everybody gets what they deserve. Uh, Good or bad, You no? know what? I don't want what I deserve. I can tell you that. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about grace and mercy. Please don't give me what I deserve. <laughs> 
I just so, said this like fantastic you know, story, but I mean, you were like, no, no, no. No, I mean, you can get what you deserve, but I don't want what I deserve, so. I want what I deserve, <laughs> damn it. You actually, though, so when you were when you were in the NFL and you played running back, you pretty much immediately jumped into coaching. I did, I did. Did you know, so was that the, was the plan always to play and then coach, or is that did that happen as you It really wasn't. Through? I mean, yeah, I was going to coach, but I was going to coach like on a high school level because I had great high school coaches and uh, I even had great college coaches. It had a huge impact on my life. Being a young man, growing up in a single parent home, coaches were like father figures to me. So I wanted to give back that way. I never really thought about the NFL. Because I mean, it's hard to lead these guys. They come here, they're young men, they're making a lot of money and and uh, it's, it's just harder, but it's not impossible. And so uh, one day Bill Walsh, Coach Walsh came up to me and said that, uh, you know, I think you should think about coaching. And um, now I didn't know how to take it at the time because I thought I was in the prime of my career. You were like, hang this guy, on. I know. You guys talking to me about teach. coaching. <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I'm not done. But, you know, I played five more years after that. But after that conversation I had with Coach Walsh one day at lunch, I was never the same in a meeting. I, I, I started thinking mm. like a coach. I started preparing like a coach. And so Coach Shanahan called on to that. And when I retired, he offered me a job immediately on his coaching staff. And so... Uh, I thought I was going to go build houses. I was I had a construction company at the time. While well, you were in the NFL? Yeah, yeah, cuz you had more time as a player. Wow. You know, you got you have the off season, and you have every Tuesday off, you have half days yeah, but Monday ha- but off. There aren't many players out there that, that have a completely different company all on their own. That's Well, impressive. see, I, I but I've been in construction since I was, since I was 13. So, it was not nothing new to me. So, uh, it's just what I did. I have a passion to do that and I'll probably do it again one day. But I didn't do it. I stuck with coaching and uh, we're walking down the sidewalk in Irvine right now talking about. I'm proud of you. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not your mom <laughs> and I haven't known you that long, but I think it's, it's been for me uh-huh. just watching on the outside and, and seeing everything you've done from the guy that was like helping with, your res- with my resume yeah. to now like a, a guy that's this phenomenal head coach and very quickly. And just so you know, I still impressive. use I still use that same font that you use. <laughs> when you typed it together. I mean, I still use the same stuff, so. I don't want to brag, but I'm an incredible typist. <laughs> and I hope I don't ever have to use it again. <laughs> I think you're setting yourself pretty nicely here. So, I mean, you get, yeah. you're living in this like really fancy oh. condo. I'm like, you've changed, coach. You've oh, changed. I haven't changed. No, I, no that's <laughs> one thing I have. I, I ain't changing. I can't. Too late in the game. What would you go back and tell yourself if you could? What, let's let's look, look back at like 16-year-old little Anthony. What, what would I go yourself? back and tell yeah. myself? Now you talk about me getting philosophical. You getting philosophical? You, you uh, it rubbed off. I don't know. Just uh, you know, there, there were times when you get down, and you know, people would uh, uh, you know, I don't want to say it on camera, but people would you know poop on your dreams. You can say shit. I'll say shit. I know if I say shit, my mom. People will shit on on your dreams. My mom my mom would kill me though. So I can't say shit. People would doubt you, you know, and and tell you that you can't do this and can't do that. And uh, you know there was times when I believed them. And and I try to encourage young people today to, you know, if you have a passion for something, follow your dreams. So what happens? I need you to make me a deal here if Okay. If the Chargers all right make a deal. If the Chargers make it to the Super Bowl, I'm gonna take credit for it. I'm gonna say that we put the good juju out there. You can I take mean, you, all okay. credit for it. So what do I get? You're, you're already taking credit for me being here now. <laughs> so. I gotta do something. Listen, I don't have as many accomplishments. I gotta take something from someone. So. I, I would like I would like like 50 yard line, second row seats. Two. Second? Yeah. Why not first row? I don't know, I feel like second seems Okay. I don't want to ask for first. I don't want to uh, ask for deal. too much. I, gotta, I want to be realistic. Deal. If they make it to the Super Bowl, this is locked. Deal. All right. Deal. Done. Done.